Dear student, welcome to our today's lecture. Today's lecture is also one of the very interesting lecture. This is psychopharmacological age. Now, till now we had many more about the pharmacological action, pharmacological related activities. Today we are going to discuss about the psychopharmacological actions. That the psycho word which is denote related to a mental illness. So in this session, we are going to see, we are going to learn about what are the different mental illnesses and what are the possible drugs used for the treatment of such mental illness. So whenever the question comes about the mental illness, there is a one point which need to be discussed that is nothing but mind. So everyone is having a mind, but what is the mean by mind? What do you know? Because this is the one concept which is related that if we concentrate it, it does some miracle. But if we are not concentrated on the mind, then it's uh, quite difficult. Then it's a quite uh, dangerous one. Because number of the things in fraction of a second, number of the things are we are thinking, number of the things are going on. There is no any such specific definition of mind or there is no any specific organ structure is available in our body that we found as a mind that we don't have. But the thing is that it is there and because of it many things could happen. If we utilize the mind power then we will get miracle. But if we are not controlling our mind, then it is very dangerous for us. That is, sometimes it may cause our life-threatening situation. So why it is like that? Because this is a mind is in a situation which is related to number of the things. And if we want to control it, we need to do some things. Everyone is get suffer from some fluctuation in mind activity. Sometimes we have excited mind, sometimes we have depressed mind, sometimes we have under mind. Many things could happen. What do you mean by this mind? Why we can call it as a mind? And if it is that, then how we could control it? Many more options are available for the controlling the mind. But with respect to our chapter, we are going to discuss about what is the mind and how it need to be controlled. So first we will see what is the mind. Mind is the virtual part of our body. Mind is a virtual part of our body. That is a psyche. That is a vital part of our body. And is extremely difficult to define. It is very extremely difficult to define. We are supposed to carry out usually some of these functions. Reception of the environmental stimuli. Whenever we have some environmental conditions, because of that environmental condition, our mind may get stimulated. If someone teases us, if someone irritates us, then we get irritated. Our thought processes get changed, we get irritated. That is an external environmental. Because of this external environmental, we change our mind state. Second, Analyze the receive information and formation of the reaction pattern. Many times, many times it happens that once we get an information that the coming person is a little bit irritating. So how will you just say he is irritating that we collected some information about him and we use some judgment about that he is a little bit irritating. So as we thought that he is irritating, then Next time, whenever he come in front of us, we are trying to give such related, correlated type of reaction to the particular person. This is a point. Or sometimes it happens like this, ki, um, if we see any cockroach-like part, cockroach-like animal, we have started to shout. So there is one wonderful story. Uh, if in a child, he don't know whether this cockroach is hazardous for us or whether this cockroach is good or bad. He is giving some hurt us. No, he don't know anything. But when he saw that, um, 
His mother is shouting whenever, whenever she saw that cocoa. So what he recorded that whenever we going to see cockroach, we start to shout and we start to run out. Why? Because he don't know anything. He saw his mother and because of that, he just copying the things that he collected the information. And next time, whenever he saw that cockroach, he started to give same reaction that is running away and shouting. That's why because of this specific sum of the information that he collected that he received. Third point is that that is also responsible for actual behavioral responses. Sometimes it is quite difficult that what type of behavior the person is giving, it is uh, analyzing, it is quite difficult. We don't know why he is behaving like this and all these things. Because of he has some perception in his mind, he is thinking something in his mind likewise. So by considering this, we can say that this is the type of thing. But it is a very interesting thing is that there is a very little information about the Neuropatholo neuropathophysiological differences between normal patient and mentally ill patient. Normal person, that's a normal patient, it's a normal individual and mentally ill patient. So, it is very difficult to analyze why it is like that. We will see in uh, next why it is like that. As well as, it is also a very less biochemical basis information available between psychiatric disorders as well as some other normal person. This biochemical activity is also very much less information is available about it. And then how would you consider that he is a psychiatric pressure and he is a mentally ill patient? How will you identify it? How will you judge it? So, depending upon its uh, primary characteristics, depending upon its some um, abnormalities, and depending upon its uh, psychiatric disorders, we can conclude that this patient is get suffering from some of the conditions. And what are these conditions that we will see in next slide? But depending upon generally, depending upon these primary abnormalities and primary psychi uh, primary dis psychiatric disorders, we are Analyzing are we are by forget some of the categories like first one is enough psychosis. Now, what do you mean by the psychosis? Actually, we know the person that is he is a psycho that we could many times we could use, try to use the word is he a psychotic person? Is he psychosis? But actually, what happened pathophysiologically? What happened when he is a, in psychosis? So in psychosis, if you see, these are the some MOEs uh, and uh, GIF that you will get identified. That little bit, these are the psychiatric disorders with an abnormal thought, behavior, as well as the perception. They are abnormal thought, behavior, that you can see that person, he is standing where he don't know and he is just dancing that. That is abnormal behavior as well as the perception. What do you mean by the perception? Perception means that he is unable to judge the actual thing, scenario, his thought process, his performance, his behavior. So in what manner he has to react to where he reacts that he is unable to judge. That we call as a perception. So that is the first thing that we call as a psychosis. What? That is abnormal thought, behavior and perception. The person loses capacity to recognize the reality. And because of its abnormal thought, because of his abnormal behavior, can't recognize the reality. Is the thing that is going to happen, is it really it is there or something the situation is different one? He can't recognize the things. He is a difficulty in recognizing the reality. If someone says ki, uh, there are few people's uh, psychosis ki, uh, if someone come that red shirt wearing person is very bad. If he is the decided this and if he is this is the perfect his thought then whenever he see a person who wear the red shirt he will start it to recognize that he is the bad person. 
but it is not the reality that he is the bad person that is nothing but he loses his capacity to recognize the reality that is the first thing next one the main symptoms are delusion and hallucination the main symptoms are delusion and hallucination now what do you mean by the delusion what do you mean by the hallucination first we will see under the psychosis delusion what do you mean by the delusion these are the false belief such as is thinking that someone is plotting against you or the tv is sending you a secret message that is is a false belief that uh, he this is an uh, image that he will give you information about it he actually it is not like that uh, this is an uh, eye and from his eye one finger came out and this finger is giving something hurting or giving some irritation or giving some harassment is it is not that he is it is his thinking it is his thinking there is one famous game nowadays it is get banned and because of that game everyone was thinking that that is the reality someone is coming there and they are giving some instructions how would i know that in my house these things are available in my surroundings they know everything so like that they are giving some information and as per their information they are giving some instructions to these are all the false belief and uh, this height of this delusion is sometimes the patient may go for the suicide why because someone is giving instructions and as per that he has to work this is thing so this is called as a delusion that is the main thing is that these are his false belief totally these are the false belief that we call as a delusion now what do you mean by the hallucination hallucination if you see this you may get recognize this this is the thing that uh, is the person he is using earbud and he is trying to clean his earbud with his earbud his ear but uh, as he entered earbud in his ear immediately his mouth is gate his face is gate blast or in this uh, nemo this is one movie nemo with this ma a fish and he is uh, suffering from such a number of the things that thoughts and other harassments and like all these things so this is what this is not actually thing is there do you think is it really happen in our life as we enter as we insert our ear burst in our ear and immediately get blast and again that face is come again see this is it really happen never it will never happen in our life that is nothing but these are the false perception false belief and false perception whenever these are the false perception that we are correlated with some hallucination and whenever it's in a false belief that we call as a delusion such as hearing seeing or feeling something that is not there is it there is it possible no marathi madhe tala apan shabd manto sapnav fakt sapna madhe rahaycha sapna mat rahata that we call as na hallucination that is a false perception someone is coming is there and they will give me one key and where in that cupboard a number of or bags of monies are there and i took that money and went in a market i purchased in bens bmw or helicopter is it reality no is it now only thought it is only a now perception that we call that na hallucination for example we took one example cognitive disorder functional disorders like schizophrenia paranoid states schizophrenia what do you mean by schizophrenia we will see in uh, next slide also what do you mean by the schizophrenia so these are what these are all called as a cognitive disorder functional disorder functional disorder means sometimes we are performing very nicely but sometimes we are performing so beautifully that front front person will uh, so impress on us that uh, he will say that is what a solid guy he is what a nice guy he is and next time we are giving us such a different response to that person he will get he is unable to recognize whether he is he was the same person that i met him last time he quite quite confused why 
because of his behavior that we call as a functional disorder like in a schizophrenia and paranoid that we are called as an hallucination so in this particularly psychosis these are the two main parameters that is in a uh, hallucination and second one is in a delirium next time delusion in respect of this affective disorders in respect of this affective disorders they are mainly considered particularly some symptoms consider some symptoms the primary symptoms of these disorders are particularly is in a mood is in a mood sometimes uh, due to some reason uh, mood is get totally change sometimes with the news our mood is get totally change it's normal if you heard a very bad news about your any friend or any relative immediately your mood is get depressed it's quite normal but many times due to certain reason only that of uh, my kid or my brother or my friend he took my pain or took my pencil that's why my mood is get swing so it's not good so few things are there because of that our moods are get or many times it happens that uh, one of my friend is there who is uh, having a very high a fan of his uh, one of famous actor salman khan and if he want to say something about salman khan he immediately get swing his mouth because of its swing mood everyone every other situation is get totally pissed off so what he says no one can say to my man no one can say to my idol actor if you are telling or you are saying something to my uh, my actor the salman khan it seems to be it is you are telling to me you are giving a harassment to me no so these are the some situations we are totally get swing so it's not a normal thing. so mood is in a state of abnormally elevated or irritable irritable it is associated with elation hyperactivity uncontrolled thought speech with or without violent behavior that's one of the very important that is violent behavior that is most important why there is a violent behavior because of they are not under their control they totally get change hyper activity means once they start they won't stop their speech once they start they continuously start to speech blah 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 they will continue it's that is an hyper activity they are continuously giving releasing their thoughts i do this that this that this that is nothing but all this is an a mania this called as an a mania so whenever there is a change in a mood change in their something that we will called as an a mania in second stage of this affective disorder in respect to the mania that we call as an a depression so what is the depression it is a state of low mood whenever we have a high state of mood that we call as a mania and whenever there is a low state of mood that we call as a no? depression and it is associated with a sadness guilt physical and mental soul slowing as well as the sometimes it might be a self destructive sometimes it might be a self destructive so that is not good for the things so if you see this this is a mania this is mania is a hyperactive trying to do many things talkative lazily delusion thinking about many things that we call as a mania and second thing is that we call as a depression in that depression that that is a extremely fatigue memory get loss poor functions poor nutrition everything is there so if you see there is an hyperactivity yes this is an called as a mania state and now it's in a depression state it's in a mania depression so it's in a totally changing it's in a totally changing so depending on this depending upon this the two disorders are get considered one is called as a bipolar that is called as a bipolar what do you mean by bipolar the person who is get suffer from both cases that is a mania and depression that we called as a bipolar while unipolar means it might be a one it might be a mania or a depression 
So whenever the patient is from this mania or depression, we can call it as a unipolar disorder. And when she is from or that person uh, patient is from mania and depression, that we call it as a bipolar. So these are the two affective disorder categorizations: unipolar or bipolar. Now, this this is one of the very interesting thing. That is a how we could how we could correlate with this mania, correlate with the depression or psychosis. There is one called as a neurosis. What do you mean by the neurosis? That is nothing but the less serious in which the ability of recognizing reality is not lost, but the patient may undergo extreme sufferings. And these are different types like if you see this image, you may get recognized the thing that is nothing but anxiety. It's an anxiety. Anxiety means what? It's an unpleasant emotional state associated with uneasiness, concern of the future. But we are thinking a lot about that future. What will happen if a mother is thinking about his child, uh, about her child or his child that? Um, when he, where he is, where he is a safe, why he is not came to the home, it's a too late, his regular timing is a 6 p.m., but it's a 7, why he is not came, why she is not came, like that, a one type of anxiety, that we call as one type of anxiety, it's a normal. But once that child came to the home, immediately her anxiety gets lost. But there are a few persons who are thinking about a lot in the, about their future. What will happen if my salary is not there, if my business is not running properly, if I am not able to achieve my target, why, what will happen? The, my number of the plannings are there as per not that planning. If I am not able to perform, then what will happen? The bonus, these, that, these, that, number of the things are there. They are thinking a lot about the future. They are thinking a lot about the future that we call as <clears throat> anxiety. That we call as anxiety. Always they are thinking about the future. Always they are thinking over cautious about the future. That we call as anxiety. And second state is a phobic state. Second state is that is a phobic state. Another image that we call as a phobia. Phobia that is nothing but fear. Fear for the unknown or some specific object or person or situation. If you told to someone that tomorrow you are going to present one. If you give an uh, topic to them and if you told him, you, you have to go and tomorrow you have to going to present on this. So they will start to thinking about or they will start to fear about it. They have said, how will I present it? They always try to convince you. I will collect the information, but I won't present it. You prepared it. You present it. I will support you. Or I will prepare. You will present it. They have a fear. That is a phobia. They are unable to uh, speak out properly. They are unable to present properly. That we call as a you know, phobic state. So it's a normal. Anxiety somewhat, anxiety is there, somewhat phobia is there. Or sometimes some of the peoples are there. If you say you go and just uh, talk with some unknown person, they are not able to talk. Why? Because they have a you know, phobia. If, he, if they went and if they try to see a mob of the people, then immediately they are started to thinking, why there is a mob? Is there anything there? I, is there any problem? Is there any bad news or something that? Like they have a phobia that we call as a fear. So because of such fear, again, there is some disturbances in their behavior, disturbances in their mood. One more thing that is called as a compulsive, uh, compulsive neurosis. That is nothing but it is a very limited abnormality of a thought or behavior which can be overcome voluntary efforts. Itself, they are taking their own efforts and again they will come back. They will get recognized that whatever I am doing, it's really childish. Whatever I am doing, it's really foolish thing that I need to improve it. I need to work on it. So they will start to work on it and immediately it will get lapse. Reactive depression, it is occurred due to the physical illness or loss of self-confidence. It is called as a reactive depression. 
At the physiology of mental illness is not clear, though some ideas have been formed. Even that all we are discussing all these things, that it is unable to discuss what is that. For the for example, dopaminergic dopaminergic effect of uh, dopaminergic activity in limbic system is overactive. If dopaminergic activity in limbic system is overly active, then it may produce schizophrenia and mania. Schizophrenia and mania. Mania that we say that we seen that is the increase in the mood, increase in the activity that we call as the mania. Schizophrenia, we will be going to see what do we mean by the schizophrenia and how it is. Thing. Second, because of the monoaminergic deficit or decrease in the quantity of monoaminergic like noradrenaline, pyodroxy, tryptamine, decrease in the level in the brain, it may produce depression. They may produce depression. That is a noradrenaline, pyotrexy, tryptamine like activity. Already we had seen in uh, antidepressant drug, that is a level of pyotrexy, tryptamine has been decreased. That is mania depression. So this is an, uh, a judgment that we are trying to use it, but it is not clear that this is the reason and because of that it is possible. So depending all these things, usually the or generally that the classification of the psychopharmacological agents are classified as antipsychotic who are also called as neuroleptics and major tranquilizers. Second one, anti-anxiety. These are anxiolytic. We are trying to reduce the anxiety. They are also called as major tranquilizers. Minor tranquilizers for the antipsychotics minor tranquilizers for the anti-anxiety, anxiolytic minor psychotics. Next one is an antidepressant. They are the agent which are used to avoid or which are used to relieve the depression that we call as an antidepressant. And last one is an anti-manic that are also called as mood stabilizer. That are called as a mood stabilizer. These are used to control mania, and to control some other cyclic effect of the disorders. We are trying to break this cyclic effect. They try to control the mania and to control the mania and to break the cyclic effect disorders. So this is the major classification of mental illness, the drug acting on mental illness. So this is what about today's lecture that we want to communicate to you. So what are the different uh, pathology, physiology. Actually, it's not a pathophysiology. We can say here is a uh, psychopharmacology. So, if we get realized what is this, then it is very helpful for the treatment. What happened when there is mania? What happened in depression? What happened when we are using a term as an antipsychotic? When we are trying to give a drug like antipsychotic. So, as we are giving a drug as an antipsychotic, what does it? What does they do? They are major tranquilizers. So what actually does? If we are giving some anxiety, anxiety, little bit, little bit irritation, then when we are using an anxiety, when we are using an anxiolyte, then also called as minor tranquilizer. Tranquilizer means for what? They are giving just calmness. They are producing calmness. That is a tranquility. As well as mood stabilizer. As we, our Mood is get disturbed. Many patients we had seen that because of their mood fluctuation, they did very dangerous actions like self-destructive actions they may took only because of the mood, mood fluctuation. And in such cases, it is necessary that we should have a mood stabilizing activity, mood stabilizer. So whenever we have such a mood stabilizer, then such manic condition or such, such other conditions could. So this is what about our general introduction about this drugs acting on mental illness. Next lecture we are going to see what are the different uh, parameters, what are the different drugs that we are going to be using. This, this is what this is for our today's lectures. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much.